Podcast with your hosts, Ron and JP. We're here today because we love Star Wars. But we didn't always love Star Wars, did we, JP? No, it's a period from about 2003 until 2014 where um, my feelings for Star Wars are very conflicted. And why is that? Well, I mean, I think we all experienced uh, the prequels, which initially... Well, the, the well it, it, it's, hard, it's hard to talk about, right? Because initially, I want to put this right out there right away. Initially, after seeing the prequels, specifically the first one, we all had that month, you know, that month or two of just, that's the greatest, it was the greatest movie ever. So glad it came out. And then the naysaying happened, and then we all started to hate. And it was an uphill battle with two and three. Um, but today, in 2014... I'm actually a massive fan of prequels. And me too. And me too. Um, so, JP, you are actually a, what we're calling ourselves, you are a second generation fan. I am a first generation fan. That so is right. Tell, tell the folks out there what that means. Uh, to me, the differentiation comes in that I became a really true hardcore Star Wars fan around the time of the, the Faces free release heart VHSs. Where they released them with the Darth Vader oh, face, right. Yoda, Stormtrooper, yeah, yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. done in THX. Right, right. Um, I think I had the laser discs of those. Oh, that, yeah. That was uh, some money now. Well, There's a market you know, for that. I bought a laser disc drive just for those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I am actually the first generation fan. I saw the movies, um, all of them, when they first came out. Um, actually, my parents took me to see Star Wars: A New Hope um, on its one year uh, anniversary and I know this because I went to the theater and the poster for the movie actually had a birthday cake with the action figures on it and the movie was actually playing for one year in the theaters I've heard about this birthday cake image on other podcasts that this is a real thing that everyone did this yeah it was I mean movies played for longer periods of time back then this was kind of the birth of the the blockbuster. Yeah, know. this and Jaws and yeah. the wide release and yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. So I was basically at the right age for Star Wars. You know, I I was, you know, seven or eight when the first movie came out. Second movie came out. I was, you know, eleven. Third movie came out. I was ready to go into high school, and I was kind of done with Star Wars. Return of Je- Jedi ended, and you know, puberty hit. See, it's interesting because right then I feel like it's when they first established what the life cycle of a Star Wars fan is, which they further refined when it got to me. Because I don't know when I first saw them. I must have seen them on Betamax or something. My dad would have shown them to me. But I actually have clear memories of watching the Ewoks movies and being convinced that the kid in the um, orange jumper was Luke Skywalker. Right, And, right. you know, my dad's telling me no. And I'm like, yeah, he's going to fight Dark Vader. And it's like... It's not dark, it's dark, you know, <laughs> little kid things. But when they re-released them, it's pretty interesting to watch the uh, marketing campaign, how that went down. First they re-release them, then the power of the Force action figures start coming out hot and heavy. Dark Horse starts doing the licensing. Um, and I'm a big comic fan, so I'm right in that wheelhouse. And then they do the movie without a movie. They do Shadows of the Empire. Right, right. And that just primed us all for new content. And once they got all that, mo- that money back, they were like, oh, there's definitely an interest. Right. And that's when they pumped out the prequels going down. Right. Yeah, definitely the uh, – there was – so basically I went through high school and college not thinking about Star Wars whatsoever. You know, Star Wars was over with Return of the Jedi. There was – obviously George Lucas had rumors that there was going to be, you know, nine movies in the entire saga, but we weren't getting those. We were only getting the first – the, the middle three mm-hmm. and that was it you those know? interviews he also it's interesting that they kind of replicated things because you saw you must have heard that nine movie rumor in I don't know magazines or something yeah I mean there was no internet back yeah, then because I got it in the interview with uh, Leonard Malton okay. that, that came right. with the VHS's of those spaces covers right so you know I went through college I graduated college and all of a sudden, there was these rumors that there, there's this whole 
expanded universe it wasn't called expanded universe back then but it was novels and the novels were going to be the sequels to return of the jedi mm. the timothy zahn novels yeah and all of a sudden you know, i graduated from college and had more free time on my hands so i started reading the eu or what the eu became starting with the timothy zahn novels and i pretty much read those all the way up to um, the infamous uh, Vector Prime novel where uh, they kill off Chewbacca. <laughs> and at that moment, I closed the book and I was kind of done with the EU. Uh, and that's an interesting uh, point, too, because I, I had my own period where I ended the EU. Um, that's a subject for another day. But that's funny differentiation between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 fans. Well, it's our hypothesis that... Um, you feel that Chewbacca, you're very close to Chewbacca. Whereas to me, I was like, well, he's the family dog. Like no, he's... Chewbacca's more than just a dog. <laughs> he's Han Solo's co-pilot. He's his, he's his guy. Well, Air to Empire came out in 91. I would have read it in 95 or so. I was in grade school when I read that. I probably read it around then, too, because I graduated college in 94, and I was nowhere near Star Wars in college. I, You know, but enough of these Holocon days. What really happened? How did it end? Okay, so... I uh, was totally on board with the re-releases, the special editions, the going to the movies and actually seeing Star Wars again on the big screen. Uh, like I haven't seen for all three. You for went all, to all three. three. I totally went to all three um, because I was living in the days of just rewatching it on video with pan and scan. So I didn't really even see the full movies again huh. until. Sure. The re-releases, the special editions, and then getting the DVDs or, well, the yeah. laser discs. Um, but totally getting back into it and finishing my collection that I had as a kid because I had all the toys. Um, and then, you know, right after the, the special editions came out, the re-releases, uh, hearing rumors that there was going to be Oh, yeah, they fired it right up. I mean, oh, yeah. the vanity cover, remember that? Yeah. When they announced yeah. it in vanity? Oh, yeah. Um, the, uh, the image of little Anakin Skywalker little with, the, with the little Annie, <laughs> with, with the Darth Vader Daddy. shadow. <laughs> with, the Dar- <laughs> with the Darth Vader shadow. Yeah. That was our first glimpse. Still love that image. That was a, it was a great image. It's a good marketing image. I mean, but um, it's interesting. So you were, were you on board for all three of the special editions? You were like, oh, great, Empire, this looks great. We're Jedi, this looks great. Yeah, I didn't really think much of it. I Honestly, there were things that I wish that he still had fixed that he didn't fix. There were still things in there that, well, um, this is not perfect yet. And he's working towards making this perfect, and the technology will catch up, but... No, I was still seeing the matte, matte images or the edges around the image, uh, the the ships, and you know just little things here and there. So I wasn't really. So I you're like, it's not perfect. So what was the point of this? Yeah, I was just like, okay, well, I kind of knew that you know George Lucas was just kind of always tweaking things, and that. Yeah. So now um, I can't remember exactly, but I think that the special edition first re release came out post. Um, post Shadows of the Empire, right? Um, oh, I don't. I, Ooh, it's I gotta really be close. Don't know. It's gotta yeah, be close. there was this whole like. Because I feel like this was a ramp up. Shadows was actually a ramp up to the re-releases. Uh, that's possible. I know. But they might have been happening in tandem. I'm trying to pull that information up right now. Ninety six is Shadows of the Empire. Okay. And the Star Wars re-release is nothing better than hearing Google. Um, nice. But the point of the story is that I was actually not taken with the special edition, the special releases. Right, a lot of I people was, weren't. And, but I was in grade school, and I went and saw this, and I'm trying to put it next to when The Matrix came out, because The Matrix would have come out like three years after the first really special edition. The Matrix came out the same year that Phantom Menace came out. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Wow, that seems year. so much closer in my time. It came out right before Phantom Menace. I was angry at The Matrix for taking all the hype that I thought Star Wars <laughs> was going to get. I, I walked out of uh, The Matrix literally saying, this is going to be our Star Wars. We'll get a trilogy. This is our Star Wars. Well, you kind of got that, didn't you? Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish for. <laughs> but the, um, so I was not into the 
special editions just because like when I thought it was cool when Jabba came out at first and I thought it was weird because it was weird he yeah, looked awful yeah and that al- first one he looked awful ultimately I didn't I didn't even go see um, Empire or Jedi in the theater because I was like it wasn't really worth it to me Oh really? Yeah, and this but is, you had never seen him in the theater. This is the decision then, I made in like right? fifth or sixth grade. You've never was, seen yeah. him before then. Yeah, so exactly. you never did you ever see Empire in the theater? I actually have never seen Empire or Jedi in the theater. Interesting. It Interesting. Is interesting. So that's why you are a Gen Two fan. Gen Two fan. I am a Gen One fan. There you go. I saw all of them in the theater. I saw, I saw Star Wars at a drive-in theater. You can tell how much we love the series because we, we keep t- dancing around the moment when we actually stopped. Okay, so the moment I stopped liking Star Wars. Um, there it is. That's the, that's yeah, the truth. I guess the big the big thing is the prequels. Mm. Right? The mm-hmm. prequels. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to say it at some point. Well, I will say this. I saw The Phantom Menace... 13 times at the movies. You were, you were one of those guys because you had the income at the time. You were that, that uh, you were a single guy probably. You had the income. I, I had the income. I had the time. Yeah. And honestly, I was high on Star Wars. This was oh, new yeah. Star Wars. I didn't see anything bad about it. I think we're feeling that right now. Yeah. I didn't see anything bad about it. The hype. I went to see The Water Boy just to see the trailer. <laughs> Just classic the trailer. Classic. Yeah, God. You know? Like, totally, totally. So I I I was in love with the Phantom Menace. And, and to be fair, that trailer for the Phantom Menace was, oh, it was a great, it was it's great, still trailer. A great trailer. It's still a great Although trailer. when you go back and watch it now and you see that puppet Yoda they use, oh, it's the like, puppet oh my Yoda's god, terrible. it's, it's every time it's like, oh that it's terrible. I don't know what terrifying. that is. Yeah. It's not a puppet Yoda, it's a it's a CGI puppet. What? Yeah, the, what it's mean? CGI. It's not a real in the trailer. In it's, the trailer. it's a scary looking thing. Yeah, they basically. I remember. I remember hearing that. That was, was the first time that it was a puppet Yoda in Empire. That's why it was so great. And then they're like, "Oh well, we need to make him younger, and we also need to make him look like a puppet." So instead of making him real, they were basically CGIing him to look like a puppet. Okay, well we'll have to do some awful. we'll have to do some research on that because that looks like a very real CGI effect oh. for the day. Oh, because that's so gross. There, there's nothing real in the prequels. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing I, real. That real. sounds true. <laughs> um, okay. I saw it was 13 times at the movies. I saw the Phantom yep. Menace 13 yep. times. Took off of work to see it. Yep. We'd literally go see it like one or two times. No, two or three times a day. Sure. Just I've um, been there just movies like that. Going mm-hmm. because people were in line. Oh. People were lining up. I mean, this people was a different were, time. Yeah, this, we is, this is the pre 9 11 world. It was a pre 9 11. People were uh, lining up around the block, literally. I can't actually remember the last movie I saw. It seemed like that was a thing of the times. Titanic. It was that a movie. Like, I, I haven't think, seen a true blockbuster where the block has been busted by a movie. And, well, I'm not, Harry I'm, Potter. No, that's Harry what Potter I was going to say. Harry Potter. I'm not saying no. no blame on Harry Potter, but I think the Harry Potter movies kind of broke that hmm. because there were so many Harry Potter movies, and they all, we all had read the books, so there weren't big surprises. I got confused with Twilight for a second. I was like, you read the books? But yeah. No, I did not read Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like. I remember waiting in line to see the first Harry Potter movie, mm-hmm. maybe waiting in line to see the second Harry Potter movie, and then by the third Harry Potter movie, it was just like, well, there's no more lines, because everyone... The third one was the best one, I thought. The third one was the last one I saw. I didn't go see any more of them, because I was kind of done. I'm sorry, I, I, I stayed current, but only because I hadn't read the books, and so I was I falling behind culturally. But, hang on, back to the anyway, subject. Anyway, Star Wars, Star Wars. So, 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 to me, I only saw it once. I went and saw it with my mom and dad and my cousin. Yeah. Okay. And we went, and I mean, we went and we loved it. I am in graduating, I'm in eighth grade at this point. Okay. And, uh... I'm in, after, I'm out of college already. Afterwards, I demand, like throw out like a little kid style demand in 8th grade where I'm like too old for it that we yeah. like stop right. and pick up some Phantom Menace fucking toys right, right. on the way home <laughs> and so we do I still have that Darth Sidious in the uh, it's still carded so it's probably worth a lot by now no none but, of the uh, Phantom Menace <laughs> <laughs> none of the Phantom Menace toys are worth anything because they were pre-selling the I remember holding before the, t- the movie came out that was we all, we've waited in line 
But do you remember the microchips that came stores. in? Yeah. Oh, okay. We waited in line at toy stores to get the toys that was, before the movie came That was out. the height of the toy world. But that's your... That, that was, yeah, that's that another was topic for another yeah, day. Yeah, that was my thing. Topic for another day. So, but that was my first moment of confusion, though, with the episode one. Because I, I picked up my Darth Sidious and I was pumped because I was like... Oh, I finally have a sweet ass like imp like emperor character. Right. You know, right. so I can like have this with my Han Solo and everybody else. But I was like looking at it and I was like, Darth Sidious, who is that? He's an old man. And then I was yeah, and I was like, I was like, but that's Emperor Palpatine, or that's like Palpatine. Oh, you were though. confused by like, the who's the Phantom Menace? Yeah, so yeah, right. I, yeah. I was right away. I was like, wait a second, why did they make it such like it's like I'm supposed to be confused at who's who when clearly Palpatine is Darth Sidious. Why is that part of a mystery? And that was a, the first stumbling block for, for me with the first thread I pulled where I was like, this doesn't come together. Now, what I've heard is the third generation fans are completely conf- They don't get it at all. They don't get that Palpatine is Sidious at all. So when that <laughs> reveal happens, it's a surprise to them. <laughs> no. It is. That's what I've heard. The Transformers generation is... The Transformers. <laughs> Gen 3 is the Transformers generation. Yes. <laughs> So, so anyway, I go see Phantom Menace 13 times at the theater. At a certain point, I'm probably seeing it at, by myself in an empty theater because people... I prefer it to wasn't, see movies. And it was... Well, yeah, but nobody was going anymore because we all bad, started to bad get... News yeah, we started to get... How long did it really take? I can't... It feels like it took about three weeks to a month before I heard a single bad word. Probably. Probably, yeah. because the internet wasn't what it is today either, so word wasn't spreading as rapidly. Hate wasn't spreading Hate rapidly. was not yeah. rapidly, but it did. Hate yeah. grabbed hold. Grabbed hold hard. The dark by, side. Yeah. By Attack of the Clones, <laughs> everyone was like, um, we were all, make this better. We were all going with like, well, I hope it's less fucked up than the last two. <laughs> right. Yeah. It can't be any worse than Phantom Menace. Yeah. No. That was the, the joke, Jar Jar. Jar Jar, yeah, Jar Jar was definitely the problem, right? I mean, I mean, there were other problems. There were but. a lot of problems because it's weird. Um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but post us watching the Clone Wars, the uh, the Fioni, Fioni, Dave Fioni, the Dave Fioni uh, epic. Uh, actually, you know, I'm on board, Jar Jar. Well, yeah, yeah. all right, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Sorry, little tease. All right, all right. A little tease. So. Uh, yeah, the hate started coming pre Attack of the Clones, where so, we're now we're now instead of being totally on board with oh my god, there's a new Star Wars movie coming out and it's going to be great. Yeah. Now we're um, uh, George, you better make this one make great because the last one mm-hmm. sucked. Yeah. All right. You so, need to redeem yourself. And this are is the you first in, are you on this? Happened, is that where so. you are? Now, as a hardcore fan, because I mean, I remember as a hardcore fan, it was hard for me like to let go and be like, George Lucas fucked up. Well, here's the here's the thing, like, I blame fandom for this. I bl- mm. I blame fandom for my downfall from liking Star Wars because the, the fans, fans, yeah, the fans started to really kind of badmouth everything that was coming out of Star Wars. The Phantom fandom. The Phantom fandom. <laughs> But it wasn't a phantom. I mean, we were all speaking very loudly that we yeah. didn't like what we were getting from Star Wars. And so... For the first time ever, for like a, a group of people who literally lapped up everything from bed sheets to keychains oh, yeah, to everything. like... If it had an SW on it, oh, right. give it to me. I had a know? Star Wars cookbook. I mean, like, you had everything. Was, so I don't want to go on too many asides, but did you... You were age of... Well, you probably didn't. Because you would have been doing cooler stuff by this point. Were you watching the Star Wars droids or Ewoks cartoons? I had no idea no that idea Star Wars droids or Ewok shows existed mm-hmm. See, until after I little... graduated from college. Because I was going back and um, re uh, finishing my collection, the collection that I uh, had preserved from childhood. Uh, and I was just going back to, you know, kind of toy show conventions and, and comic book conventions and, and trying to build the rest of my collection just to just to build it out. Um, so that's when I, I realized that, oh, there were these other two TV shows I had no idea because I didn't 
you know, I didn't go home and watch cartoons after school because I was in high school. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, you got yeah. other things in your mind. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, I was just asked because that came out in 85. 85. 85, yeah. 86. Which 85, was, I was a sophomore in high school. I was one year old, and uh, yeah. yeah. And, it, and this was a time before that, like, I could have easily, at age eight or something, seen it on Netflix. You know, yeah, if I, came, wasn't available. if I went to high school as just, a sophomore at, with an Ewoks backpack, would have been beaten up. Easy. Yeah, nice. Just just shit kicked out of me right away. <laughs> so, uh, Attack, of the, Attack of the Clones comes out, and we all kind of think this is better. This is better. There's action, and there's uh, all of a sudden there's a new there's a there's a new Fett. Django Fett is in this. Ah, uh, right? uh, yep. Yeah. George Lucas is paying fan service. He's giving us Django Fett. Who's the father of Boba Fett? Oh, we're getting Boba Fett origin story. Mm-hmm. You know, total fan service, right? Yeah, and I mean, and it's the the definition of fan service. Absolutely. And I think this was actually the moment where, for me, it became the real death knell. It was where I was like, I kind of, you know, there was a possibility if you would have stuck to the course that you could have convinced me I was wrong and not liking Phantom Menace. But, like, once you tried to acquiesce my desires and give me a Boba Fett story and I knew that you didn't give a shit about Boba Fett there's a minor character in those movies right, right. that's when I was like okay so now we're getting to the level of expanded you and like that's when it all became invalid right to me yeah yeah George Lucas was I'm in high school at this point by the way okay so you're rebellious at the time yeah I'm yes. already like yeah. and George Lucas I mean he did kind of make it known that he did not intend for Boba Fett to become as popular of a character as he ended up being. You know, it's, it's one and of I think that one of the things that did it was the special editions. Like, he was paying fan service back then. He put them into A New Hope. This is one of the few places where you can point to the holiday special as a point of, like, well, he was in the, he was in the holiday special cartoon. Right. So, you can give it... That's always the one... By the way, is the holiday special still considered canon? Well, I under think, the Disney regime. Oh, uh, I, I don't think it's canon, but I think. Does the Disney regime even know that the holiday special exists? Oh, certainly. No, I, think I don't think they do. Kathleen Kennedy, I feel, is very on top of that world. Yes, but she's Lucasfilm. She's not Disney. I don't think Bob yeah, Iger. Yeah, I don't think she's Bob. She's Disney, though, right? I think <laughs> she's head of the Lucasfilm. Division world of Disney, like, yeah. as if like since Lucasfilm is now something equivalent to say Pixar, right? Or Marvel, she is, yeah, she is the John Lasseter, of, or the Joey Q of Marvel. Exactly. Yes. yes. Okay. Got right? it. Right. So I like. I'm on board. With I don't it. think that Kathleen Kennedy's the subject for another podcast. Oh, entirely. absolutely, I absolutely. Spend a whole hour but I don't think Bob Iger knows that a that there's novels that might actually exist. No. Novels in the EU that might actually work in the canon, because he made a blanket blanket statement that says all all EU is not canon. Yep. Right. Yep. But I think that there now. is some stuff. Yeah, legends. We're just so chomping at the bit to talk about the EU. It's oh, yeah, so absolutely. obvious in this podcast. Is, <laughs> are we? Is anyone gonna ever call it legends? I, I I don't mind the Legends term. No, I don't mind it. But yeah. Like, we've it's been so conditioned to the yeah, EU. For me, it'll be the EU forever. Yeah, it's going to be the EU. Yeah. It's EU. Yeah. Like, it's so easy to... Yeah, it feels good to say you. Right. Those action... Did you ever see those EU action figures? Oh, I had them. What are you talking about? Oh. Yeah. See, I'm... Uh, yeah, anyhow. That's anyway. the new there. Right. So, anyway. Uh, Attack of the Clones comes out. Yeah. Um, maybe I saw it. Three times at the movies. Uh, that now we're getting Maybe. to the point where the sweet spot for me, where I was, uh, I had a car, so I could drive to see things, and so I saw this at least, at least three times, if yeah. not way more. And I also, this was that sweet spot too, where we're getting hit with the, um, with the uh, peanut butter and chocolate of uh, Star Wars, and then six months later, um, The Hobbit. Or the Lord oh, of the Rings. That? Is that the same time frame? Oh yeah, yeah. This is. Oh, when I guess started, it is. Like, it's it's post nine eleven. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's another thing. It thing is that post nine eleven. Crazy thing that happened between episode one, and episode two is nine eleven. Nine eleven just it's happened weird. to happen. And, and people, people nowadays make a big comparison between uh, the prequel series and the um, 
kind of the nature of the U.S. post 9/11. Really? Yeah. I've never heard libertarian arguments quite a bit. I for the prequel series. Yes. See, I've never heard anybody actually care to dissect it that much. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny. Look, I have a, I have a friend um, who's very. Uh, I guess he would be considered libertarian, and he is. Uh, we were talking about the prequels because I was telling him about how you know in a post the Clone Wars world I can look back and it all works. It does all work. So, yeah, it does. By all the way, work. we should probably put that out there right now. Uh, this is actually a podcast about two lapsed fans who are pro prequels, pro two, the Clone Wars. Two fans, one being a Generation One fan and one being a Generation Two fan, who. Because of one thing in particular, are now fully on board with everything Star Wars. Fully on board, more so than I have been since since that probably that three week window post Phantom Menace. Yeah, probably on board more with Star Wars now than when I was getting back into it after I graduated from college and recollecting things and reading every EU novel that I could get my hands on. So if you're out there listening and you know that Episode Seven's coming out and you're kind of vaguely interested but you're thinking, oh, I don't know, there's all this EU and there's all this other stuff, we're right there with you. And uh, this is the podcast to listen to to find out how to bridge that gap and get back to that world that you used to How enjoy. to get back to loving Star Wars. For all it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> and more. <laughs> um, okay, so Attack of Clones comes out. You are in favor of it after you see it or no? I. How did you walk out of here's the Here's the thing. I was probably mostly on board with it, except for the, the, the Padme Anakin scenes. They really are just... Well, this they're, is my favorite. They're, they're my favorite bit of dialogue here. The... Uh, I hate sand. It's rough and coarse, no. and it gets everywhere. <laughs> it's so. Uh, but can we really blame George Lucas for this? For poor dialogue read. Technically, as a director, yes. <laughs> but neither here nor there. When I walked out of it, I was very much using it to rub in the faces of the people who knew how much I love Star Wars and were talking shit about Phantom Menace. Because I had to, like, eat crow on Phantom Menace, you yeah, know? right. At a right. certain point, I had gone around for a month being like, you got to see it's the greatest movie ever! Yeah. And, then, yeah. um, and then, you know, they'd go see it, and they'd be like, well, I don't know. And then at some point, <laughs> all these you don't plot know? holes. This is still great. <laughs> yeah. And then eventually you get worn down, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then so, going on the internet, finally, and being like, oh, oh wait. God. Everyone, everyone hates this. this. <laughs> So after I watch uh, Attack of Clones, I'm running around to everybody being like, well, it's not a little kid anymore. That's good. Yeah. Uh, there's right. uh, there's some new characters that are cool. Yoda does some badass Yoda shit. Yoda does some badass shit. Um, and you got Jango Fett and Obi-Wan yep. fighting yep. in the rain. Still and you see favorite. lightsaber in the rain. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and there's clones and there's war. And, and, and we'll talk really in depth about this in the next yeah, podcast I think, about yeah. prequels. Yeah. But... So we're coming out of that, and you're feeling okay. Kind of feeling okay. Kind of feeling but okay. Like we have one more movie. There's one more. We started off in a stumble step. We might be able to get Phantom out of Menace it. was okay. Attack of Clones is a little better. So the next one gonna be great. Goes to stands for reason. The closer we get to that original be trilogy, great. the better it'll right? get. Right. And even the title when they finally announced the title. Yeah. Oh well, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, this is. You know, yeah. Tying back to finally. Return of the Jedi. Finally, Revenge finally find out Sith. what a Sith is. Right. This yeah. is okay. This is all going to work. Right. Are you reading the uh, EU novels in between this, like the uh, Rogue Planet and that no, kind of stuff? No, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. No, no. Okay. I mean, I was no. just wondering if you've been reading there. those as it was happening. I haven't gotten there yet. So no. even at the time, you were like, your um, excitement was dwindled my, to a point yeah, where no, my, you're like, I'm not reading these fucking I didn't. EU yeah, novels. the EU was dead to me. At that, that was point. probably the darkest period for the EU. It was dark, yeah, because I mean, we, I'm sure none of the authors knew what to do. Exactly. I mean, know? I'm going back currently listening to a lot of that stuff, and some kind of get it, and most just are very, like, the tone is bizarre. Yeah, I'm sure. Anyhow. I'm sure. They don't know what, they don't know what to do. And so I a three-year gap in between those? I, I always assumed that there was always a three-year gap between Star Wars movies. Interesting note that happened between these ones, though, right? Wasn't the Clone Wars cartoon by... Tartofsky in that period? Mm. 
No. Did that come out? I don't know. Um, that I is a blur for me. From, yeah, same here, actually. Because of the whole, uh, what was it, Samurai Jack? Yes, which, which I, I loved as it was coming which, out. As an older... F- a older person I wasn't like I saw it I thought it was great but I was like well whatever it's still a cartoon uh, yeah actually so yeah that's right it started off on Cartoon Network as a series of shorts three minute yep. shorts yep. Uh, from 2003-2005 to ramp us all up for episode three is that really that's yeah. the time frame yep and okay. so that was I don't really remember the storyline that well I mean I was a massive and am a massive uh, Tartoski fan sure, sure. Uh, and that, I thought it was just beautiful the animation and everything and it was cool they kind of uh, grew Anna kind of beard a bit made him a little tougher Not they gave him beard. tattoos too didn't they I don't remember I think so if you actually google like Tar- Tarkovsky Tarkovsky is that how you pronounce it well uh, I was saying Tar- 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 Tarkovsky yeah Tarkovsky. Uh, fan, uh, folks we don't really know how to pronounce yeah, I mean, things I mean get prepared it's this Star is uh, Wars. this is going to be a long podcast of yeah. butchering pronunciations yeah wait till we get to actual character names we're not going to do good at all <laughs> so anyway I think that there's if you google Anakin Tarkovsky uh, shirtless maybe I don't know if you want to google I, that I don't, but know. I don't know if you want to google that but the, I think that the, he has tattoos but if you feel like emailing in us, uh, telling us what the correct pronunciation is, we'll give you that email at the end of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, um, yeah, I wasn't really fully on board with that series. I was at the time. I At the time, I remember literally saying that he understood Star Wars better than George Lucas. I, there was that. That was the that was going cry around. Yeah, that was haters. going around, yeah. There was def- all of a sudden there's somebody that knows Star Wars better than George Lucas. Mm-hmm. That was the first sign. Yeah. Somebody, also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Star Wars episode. And he's kind of because he's the Anakin of episode our Episode 6.5, <laughs> The False Hope. Yeah. <laughs> So let's keep this timeline going. All right. So you were not watching this as that was happening. Though. I was not watching that at all. I, I didn't I see it till. I saw some, but I wasn't really interested in yeah. it, to be honest. I was. I. Mm. I had a very good friend in Star in uh, high school who was very into Star Wars, and uh, we were. I will say, Attack of the Clones. I can't remember the trailer. I would actually. It would be worth taking a break and watching it, but I was so pumped for that movie. It was for Attack insane. of the Clones. No, no, no. Sorry, for Revenge of the Sith. Oh, for Revenge, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, here's here's how the downfall happens. I only saw it once. Oof. Only saw it once at the movies. You know, I can't remember how. Because I was done again. I'm done with I Star Wars. I can't remember how many times I saw it. I feel like I must have seen it at least twice. Only because the first time I saw it, it was this awesome epic like climax of friendship. Because we had uh, my friend came back from college. I was still living at home. Like, we had to go through a rainstorm, lock the keys in the car. It was this t- wow. epic thing. And we finally get there, and we had to sit all the way in the front row. And so we're just staring up at, you know. See, soup. for me, it was completely different. There were no lines anymore. There mm. weren't people dressed up waiting in line for it. It was just kind of like the fizzle yeah. the fizzle ending. Yeah. You know, it just was like, okay, get this over with. We all know what's going to happen anyway. Um I remember driving around with my friend afterwards and having a, a what I felt was, a, it still feels a pretty mature insight where I said, you know, he told the story he wanted to tell. He did. He told a political story. He did. And, um, but even at the time, I was watching the stuff in the, like, the long lava scene, the fighting. Yes. On, uh, what is that planet called? Mustafar. 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 Um... Um, as far as I was like, this is clearly a video game setup. It was, and I was also was very agitated about the use of the rockets on R two D two. Yeah, that's something that to this day still needs to be explained. Why he had rockets in well, the, I, I think Revenge we'll, of the Sith and let's not in a new home. That we'll come back. Yeah, we to need that. to get back to that. That's something that Episode Seven needs to fix. So oh. JJ, if you're listening, which you I'm sure are not, um, fix that. I yeah. guess. Or, I don't know. Well, I mean, be, be clear what we might fix it, because I don't... Well, let's, we'll come back to it. Tabled, it's on the sheet, we'll on, come back to it. It's on the it. table. Um, rocket boots, R2-D2. Yeah, rocket, rocket legs. Rocket legs. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you came out of that, and that was the last fizzle for you. That was, that was it. Uh, that was it. Died of the Wimper. Yeah. 
that was it. The fans had spoken. Uh, the EU is dead to me because yep. Chewbacca died in Vector Prime. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the movies are over. I don't know when Vector Prime came out, but I, I was kind of done. I was just done. Like, I, I there was no real like. Okay, George told his story. He said there was going to be nine episodes, but then he went back on and said, no, there's really only six. So we're getting it, and oh, yeah, they're not as fun as the first th- or the, the middle three, apparently. So, yeah, just kind of feeling deflated. And, and obviously by that point, we had... We had new up and comers. We had, you know, Peter Jackson doing Lord oh, yeah. of the Rings. Oh, and Lord of the Rings became my Star Wars. And let's not forget about the Matrix still happening. We had the Matrix still, still going on. We had, you know, a lot of new, new creators things. that were probably inspired by George Lucas oh, that were doing their own thing certainly. finally. Certainly. You know, so Star Wars wasn't as important. It was a fun thing. I'm glad it existed, but it's over. Yeah, it wasn't as important anymore. I will yeah. agree. I will say that I thought it was kind of over as well. Um, I didn't read any more novels after that. Um, I had quit reading. So when did when did Phantom Menace finally come out? Or, yeah. I'm sorry, not Phantom Menace. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. What was the year that that came out? Revenge of the Sith, I believe, came out in 2004. Let me just double check. 2005, actually. 2005. Yeah. Wow. So between 2005 and present day, that was truly the dark times for me. Yeah. I, we, you and I, um, you and I started working together in 2000 and 2012. 12. 2012. Yeah. 2012. Yeah. And. Uh, that's kind of how that was our inroads. Well, we didn't even up. talk about Star Wars at all when we first started no. working together. No, I mean I think that took you a were the comic serious book guy. three to six months. Yeah, we didn't we didn't mention Star Wars at all. Star Wars was not something that people talked about, and, but, but well, it was still going on, and we didn't even know it. Yeah, it was still going on. Dave Filoni was still that's cranking right. out stuff. Well, I remember talking to you about Clone Wars, where I'd gotten really interested because a friend had told me kind of everything I've heard this seems to be the way that people get into Clone Wars is this kind of sheepish have you uh, seen the the Clone Wars cartoon? Because it's a cartoon. And then someone yeah, you know, someone's like oh yeah I've maybe heard of it or seen it this and that and I was like yeah <laughs> you know kind of make a joke about it and then it's like but you know they saw an episode the other day it wasn't uh, wasn't actually that bad. Yeah I don't know yeah. this, this might be actually oh, for, yeah. it's, it's not just for kids. It reminds me of how on the playground I used to talk with my friends about uh, the Power Rangers. Even though we were all in like third and fourth grade and totally age appropriate we all knew it was silly so we would talk about it like that. We'd be like so, uh, you like the Power Rangers? Oh, yeah, that's kind of silly, whatever. You know, you kind of slowly get into it. Right, but right. It's the same thing now with adults, though, for Clone Wars. Because the Clone Wars is actually a pretty dang good show. The Clone Wars is great. The Clone Wars... Okay, so here's the thing with the Clone Wars. Here's the thing with fandom in general. Mm-hmm. Is it's divided. Yeah. We are in a state where... The fans of Star Wars are clearly divided. Yep. You have the the first generation of fans who only think that the original trilogy, the OT, is the the OT. That's the best thing, right? Mm-hmm. And you have the second generation of fans who maybe their parents, their their fathers thrust Star Wars upon them is when they were young. Yeah. Oh, you need to get into Star Wars. Oh, sure. And, You'll love and, it. Yeah. And Light swords. They liked... They, they they took them to see the prequels, and they loved the prequels. And they were like, oh, well, let me show you the the, the original three. And they're they like, oh, this is boring. This is, there's, this is just boring. Where's Jar Jar? Right? That's what the second generation of fans really is like. Is like, they don't... They think that Empire Strikes Back is, is the slow one. Is the one where everyone's just talking. Well, it's weird when you go back and you after after watching um, after watching an epic lightsaber battle uh, between Palpatine and Yoda in Episode Three, yeah. and you go to Star Wars, Star Wars where and the two old guys are just standing there, kind of waving. And that is the only use yeah. of a lightsaber in a battle. Oh. Yeah. You know? Right, so, right. yeah. Well, did I you mean, see the YouTube video where the guy breaks down, like, crazily the all the words 
yes, that yes, I mentioned yes. in Star Wars. Yeah. Like, alphabetically, he just goes through, and it's like a 45-minute video or something. He just, like... Lightsaber is only used lightsaber once. Lightsaber is only mentioned once in Star Wars. Yeah, that um, was in a new hope. fact. Yeah. So, yeah, so lightsabers weren't that big of a deal yet. And they were really... I don't even know, like... I bet you he does Empire Strikes Back. I don't even know if lightsaber is mentioned in Empire Strikes Back. Who knows? Who knows, yeah. You know? Oh, I, I'm sure... Well, no, that was Return of the Jedi. Vader mentions it to Luke, but I don't know if lightsabers are mentioned in Empire Strikes Back. Oh, I'd have to think about it. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But... So just to kind of cap this section off here. Yeah. You're a Gen 1 fan. You were there when the first movies came out. I'm yes. a Gen 2 fan. THX re-releases. We both kind of lost faith post-prequels into the dark times. Yep. Got to a point where... When we actually started working together again in 2012, so that's a, a gap of seven, seven years. years. So seven years. By the time we met each other, we talked about we should make a podcast that's all about Star Wars hate. Star Wars Star hate. Star Wars yeah. nope. Yeah. That Star was, Wars a new nope. Yeah, Star Wars a new nope. And that was, the, that was the original concept for this podcast. Yeah. And then over the course of a year and a half... We yeah. have now gone full fledged all the way around to the so, granular yeah. where yeah. we uh, we're all on board with Star Wars and how do what's the big rediscovering what's, our what's the two words that got us back on board? Clone Wars. Clone Wars. All right, folks, we're gonna end it right there. Um, tune in next time when we uh, continue our discussion about Star Wars, when we get into uh, the Clone Wars and what it means to um, like the Clone Wars and like everything Star Wars. So uh, tune in, and we will continue our our, uh, our conversation. May the first be with you. It was a blockbuster summer. Moving pictures got us through to September. They made a movie about me and you And they made it half mute and half true There was a blood-sucking summer I spent half the time trying to get paid for my savior Swishing through the city center I did a couple favors for these guys who look like Tuscan Raiders <laughs>